when he uh, comes to do some uh, anything, he turns to Allah. He calls to Allah. He turns himself to Allah. He complains to Him for every small and major thing from the issues of his religion or his world or any of his states. So Allah Azza wa Jal loves from his servant uh, see, seeking his help and turning to him in every small and in every big thing. To the point the Prophet even said he informed Sayyidina Aisha ask Allah for everything even the salt in your food and 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 one of its meanings is that one doesn't say oh there's no big deal it's a small thing don't do not belittle prayer by asking for such simple things true it is something small but you are never free of need of Allah Azza wa Jal when you call Azza wa, uh, when you call out to Allah Azza wa Jal you are declaring that you are in dire need of Allah in every single thing for every small thing and every big thing and that is the ultimate reality so for this reason the one who turns to Allah Azza wa Jal for every small and big thing this person is called a munib he, he, he's called a slave who's a munib uh, to Allah someone who turns out turns to Allah for every single thing and Allah says that no one remembers or no one is reminded except those who are munib and may Allah make us from them so tonight we'll continue uh, the conversation on this uh, on this regard from the words of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud in the name of Allah the most gracious most merciful praise and salutation be upon our master Muhammad his family companions treaties for the seekers of guidance by Imam Muhasibi, may Allah be pleased with him and may we be united with him and our teachers in the highest of, par in the highest of paradise of the Prophet ﷺ, to the point where he said no that you will not experience the sweetness of faith until you believe in the ordainment of Allah, it's good and evil speak the truth and act on it, Allah will increase you in the light and the heart vision do not be like one who commands the truth, yet he is far from it. You are then forced to confess your sins and are exposed to the anger of Allah. Allah says, Grievously hated is it with Allah that you say what you do not do. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, One who gives advice but is not admonish, ad, admonish himself, who pulls other people back from ruination but he himself is not pulled back and forbids wrong, but he fails to heed his own admonition, will be disappointed when he meets Allah. He says, No that you will not experience the sweetness of faith until you believe in the ordainment of Allah is good and evil so faith is a is a uh, is a it is a meaning in the heart and the scholars say it is affirmation in the heart and action by the limbs so the limbs act and the heart affirms so for this reason faith is 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 um, speech uh, by words and from this we know uh, that a slave has entered into the realm of the faith of the common people but it is every believer uh, it does every believer taste the sweetness of faith there are some of the believers who don't taste the sweetness of faith why are there me reasons for that yes sweetness of faith is not tasted uh, or experience except unless someone completes his faith uh, and what we mean by complete faith is that you filled all of the parameters but complete faith is unlimited because faith keeps growing and every good deed you do increase in faith so for this reason there is no end to doing good deeds so for this reason we are saying uh, a, a relative perfection or completeness of faith is referred over here. So sweetness of faith 
has has means to uh, and and not experiencing that sweetness of faith has means or has causes and the prophet also mentioned in some of the hadith in an indirect way that such and such people will not taste the sweetness of faith who are they they are the ones about which the prophet said allah true by allah those these people do not believe meaning their faith is not complete so we said sweetness of faith is for the one whose faith is complete or completed perfected and then there are some hadiths that we've heard from the prophet some where he swears by allah i swear by allah that such and such people who do such things their faith is not complete their faith, faith is not completed the one for instance who goes to sleep uh, with his tummy full and his, his neighbor is hungry this is a person whose faith is not completed or perfected and consequently if your faith is not completed then he will not taste its sweetness is that clear and you can measure all other things on in this manner like how the prophet said none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself meaning his if your your faith is not completed doesn't mean you are a disbeliever none of you truly believe meaning none of yours faith is complete with allah until you love for your brother what you love for yourself so if the faith is completed he tastes the sweetness of faith so we we the prophet said three people uh, or three qualities if a person has in them he will find through it sweetness of faith so these three qualities must be united or inside of a person for him to taste the sweetness so three qualities whoever has in him these qualities will taste the sweetness of faith first that Allah and the Prophet and his messenger are more beloved to him than everything else so for this reason many people nowadays they say I pray but I don't taste the sweetness of prayer when we say sweetness of faith what does it mean it means that when you do righteous deeds you taste a sweetness in them like prayer or dhikr or recitation of the Quran all these have a, a sweetness do you experience the sweetness of prayer why not do you taste the sweetness of recitation of Quran or the sweetness of of dhikr or do you taste the sweetness of attending gatherings of knowledge or do you taste the sweetness of the nightly prayer why not ask yourself is Allah and his messenger more beloved to you than everything else is that in you are Allah and the uh, Prophet Asam more beloved to you, more, more beloved to us than everything else. Everyone should ask himself. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Say that if your parents, your fathers, and your children, and your spouses, and your wealth, and your trade that you fear its loss, and your houses are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, and Allah, He mentions your fathers, your your." children <coughs> your spouses your friends your brothers your wealth your houses your trade all these all people are all preoccupied with themselves their children their tribe their nationality their, their children their spouses their job their cars their houses their appearances their clothes if these are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger? In fact, Allah is not pleased. Allah Azza wa is not pleased that we love ourselves, our own selves, more than loving the Prophet. The Prophet said, By Allah, I swear by Allah, none of you truly believe until I am more beloved to Him than Him. Than his children, his parents, and his own self, and and all people, meaning your faith is not completed, and if your faith is not completed, that means you won't taste its sweetness. Until I become more beloved to him than himself, and his ch child, and his father, and when we mean 
uh, uh, when it says his his child, it means all his progeny, his children, his grandchildren, his great grandchildren, and and the children of his brothers and sisters. So that until I'm more beloved to him than his children and his parents, and by parents it includes uh, everyone in your lineage and in your tribe, and you can you can uh, 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 you can include in that your country. Then he said. And all people, and all people, no, then now the second reason is that a person, that a person does not love anything except that he loves it for the sake of Allah, those who love each other for the sake of Allah, and this is, and something that is is a practically impel, uh, impel, um, that if somebody wishes to 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 love someone then he should make sure that he lo he's loving that person for the sake of Allah that is sincerely for Allah not for any ulterior motive for his knowledge for his righteousness for his piety for or for the fact that he reminds you of Allah azza wa jal or he advises you or counsels you or you gather together to remember Allah azza wa jal and similar and in and, and, and for instance they say that those who love each other for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, when they come together and they speak then they are speaking about Allah and people of the dunya when they come together and when they speak then they speak of everything except Allah those who love each other for the sake of Allah when they come together and when they speak and they're silent of uh, uh, they're silent uh, 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 from everything except Allah so these two companions who love each other for the sake of Allah they deserve to be under the shade of Allah's throne on the day of judgment because he said that the people who be under my shade will be those who come together for my sake and leave each other for my sake. So we ask Allah that He makes us from them. Now the third type that He hates to return to disbelief like He would hate to be thrown into the fire. And uh, likeness of this would be sin. If, for instance, Allah guided a person to Islam, then it is important for him to dislike or hate disbelief and kufr as if he is as if he he was being burnt and then he got saved and then somebody comes and asks him do you want to be thrown back into the fire of course he would say no i don't want to go back if a person is in a in in a, in a in a fire in a building and then people save him would he wish to go back to that fire no he wouldn't wish similarly the one who allah saved from disbelief then he should hate to return back to that to the disbelief like he would hate to be thrown back into fire so and this for and this person would taste the sweetness of faith and similar and this and this also includes the sinful person whom Allah has forgiven that he should hate to return back to that sin and to that sin like he would hate to be thrown into the fire and every one of us should ask him or herself that are we truly um, those who hate for instance if we are afflicted with a particular sin that and then he returns and repents to Allah does he find in himself that 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 if the thought of him going back to that sin is similar to him being thrown into the fire if it is that if it's truly like that then he would taste the sweetness of faith some people say um, I I left the sin I, I repented to Allah, but um, my my lower self remembers the past as if as if the lower self is reminding him of the pleasure uh, of the fun. When we tell you, then struggle against yourself. If your lower self is still li liking or desiring uh, sin, or remembering it, or longing for it, or 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 or, or, or you know, just r relishing on the thought of it, like that age of ignorance, or the when he was young, or if the lower self is 
is not r remorseful of it, then he should r reproach it and address it and say, uh, "How dare you? Uh, do you do you wish to be returned to to the age of sin and heedlessness of Allah Azza after Allah has saved you from this filth and this dirt? So you try to to uh, make the sin appear disgusting to the lower self. Oh, uh, oh, 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 wretched s self, do you love to uh, return back to that sin? You, 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 do you still like to listen to horrible uh, words? So you need to m make your lower self de de despise that sin. How is it that Allah has saved you and put you into the gatherings of scholars and, and awliya and still you are like this? So he says, know that you will not experience the sweetness of faith until you believe in the qadr of Allah, its good and the evil. What is the relationship between sweetness of faith and faith in Allah's decree, uh, with the good and the bad? It's, uh, we know that we believe in the in the divine decree qadr is part of our articles of faith but the but what is intended is to believe that all good and bad is from Allah it is from Allah that that it is the order it is the command of Allah and what is what is required of you is to submit how can a person be content that he should know by knowing that Allah intends good that and a person should know that Allah's intent is good. Whatever, he, uh, whatever struggles he goes through, and whatever he, whenever he's, uh, he has to show patience, he will taste the sweetness and take this as a rule of uh, uh, an axiom. Uh, anything that is preceded by struggle, then you will taste its sweetness. If you strive against yourself. Uh, to leave a particular sin then Allah will make you taste the, the sweetness of leaving that sin if you strive or struggle against your lower self to, to, to implement in yourself good qualities then Allah will make you taste its uh, sweetness Sayyidina Bilal he 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 in the beginning of his uh, entering into Islam he was being tortured and but when he showed patience and he struggled against himself Allah made him taste and uh, the sweetness of faith while he was in the midst uh, middle of Mecca in the summers outside under the sun to the point where the Prophet Sassam, uh, the Prophet even told us that whoever lowers his gaze, Allah Azza wa Jal will give him uh, at that moment a faith that uh, it's a faith, the sweetness of which he will uh, taste in his heart. Why? Because lowering a gaze for a a a, a person who is young, a young man. Uh, where where he has all of his desires and he is in this age where all of these uh, um, all this uh, uh, promiscuity is out around him then this uh, but we're not just talking about a young man we're talking about every single person a man and a woman but we're talking about the young man in 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 in, in particular because he has a strong desire especially if he's a bachelor if he's not married because the the desires are more uh, severe if a person, a young man, it's or it's very easy for him to look at things that are prohibited, and every single thing is inviting him to that. And his and his lower self is calling him to it. Everything is available, and despite that. He, he lowers himself and he struggles and outwardly there is there is uh, there's difficulty and there's pain but when he shows patience then the Prophet said that Allah will give him a faith or, or, or iman that he would taste in his heart the taste or the sweetness of victory over the lower self but this requires strength uh, may Allah make us firm with the firm word, especially this in this day and age, where uh, all these uh, distractions are so readily available, to the point 
it is said uh, uh, but to the point I mean it could be that a person lowers his gaze once or twice or, th or three times but imagine a person a young man leaving his house and in front of him there are a hundred prohibited things that he can look at it is a form of jihad but if he was true and he was patient and he sought help and assistance from Allah then he would be given that faith and that sweetness of faith as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned until you believe in the Qadr, the Divine Decree of Allah is good and evil why? because when you are when you show patience or when you're patient before the decree of Allah Allah will Allah will give you sweetness uh, in what in what in, in in what Allah has planned for you so Allah will make make you witness the beauty in his in his planning in in his, how Allah will make you sh witness the, the the greatness and the beauty in his planning you will see that that Allah has planned for you the best of planning and and it and what would follow that would be great gifting from Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal for ease and well being in this and speak the truth and act on it. Allah will increase you in light and heart vision and basira. Notice the the counsels or the advices of the great ones. He says and be be uh, of those who act upon the truth what is the truth why didn't he say be why didn't he say uh, uh, be acting upon good actions or he said uh, uh, speak the truth and act on it from the meanings of the truth here is that you worship Allah as if you witness him meaning if you do a righteous deed Uh, do it as if uh, do it as a person who knows that Allah is observing him or watching him in other words that you do an action that pleases your Lord that is the truth this is the reality you do an action and you want uh, to please Allah Azza wa Jal so you be you speak the truth or you act upon the truth Allah will increase you in light and, and basira and from the meanings of truth is that a person may be may be may face some situations where he has to be just even if he if it's against him his own self oh you who believe be just uh, when you are called to sh to to judge whether even if it's against your own self or your parents even if it's against your own self or against your child you can you can say to your son or your daughter or your spouse and people you love if they mistake if they wronged you tell them you made a mistake you should you should stand for the truth don't uh, uh, don't conceal uh, and the Prophet said and it is something that is inc inconceivable of Sayyidina Fatima of doing and she, he said if Sayyidina Fatima uh, were to steal I would uh, if, if Fatima the daughter of Muhammad he, he didn't just say Fatima he said Fatima my daughter meaning your daughter if she were to steal, I would cut her. Now, I, I mean, God forbid, I would cut her, sever her hands, which is inconceivable of her to do. So, God will increase you in light and heart vision. So, what is the relationship between light and heart vision uh, with, with regards to truth? Because most people are deluded by things that, 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 uh, obscure truth so the more you act upon truth the more Allah will give you light and basira and this light will make you see things uh, for their real uh, for what they really are 
to the point that they said that from uh, the that this this light has levels of course that that he would from this light he would know the truthful person from the liar just through this light by looking at their faces they even say that he would know that this food is halal or haram from this light of hakika of reality and from this also uh, from this light there are people who are shown uh, Allah Allah shows them the stage the, the states of people who would come after like for instance we hear some of the Salihin the righteous people who would say for instance that that a time would come this would come and that would come and this is not the words of the Prophet we know the prophets get in uh, revelation but but awliya say a time would come with this and this would happen and this does happen this comes from the light of reality Allah increase you in light and basira heart vision and then he says do not be like one who commands the truth yet he is far from it don't be from those who call to the truth and he is far from it or you call to goodness and you don't do that goodness yourself uh, but that does not mean that okay as long as I am I don't pray if a father doesn't pray for instance does that mean he d he wouldn't order his kids to pray no if a father let's say uh, has the habit of smoking does that mean he won't tell his children don't smoke no he would tell of course that what is best is that if a person or uh, advises people then he should act upon it uh, as well that, that he acts upon it as well the best uh, combination is like this but if he doesn't if he, if he doesn't act upon the advice then that doesn't that shouldn't stop him from advising and he's better than the one who doesn't advise towards doing good or doesn't command people to do good and doesn't do good so this is the one who doesn't advise and doesn't do good is worse than the one who advises but doesn't do good so here shaitan will come and say oh you don't stand up in the night and pray you don't do any of these good things uh, you you fall short in doing these good things but and you go and call people uh, to the truth it, they say that if you are afraid that of calling people to good and you are not from those who are good and and you're afraid of being from those who call to good and don't do good themselves then what are you supposed to do you're supposed to intend to advise yourself first this is this is what Imam al-Haddad said in his book that when I say alayka and and you should then I'm, ad I'm addressing myself so you should address yourself first and then others you say oh so and so I, I counsel you to fear Allah so you intend with that I am I am addressing myself oh lower self oh myself that I'm, 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 I'm telling you to fear Allah or I'm counseling you to uh, have taqwa of Allah and you should be true in, in saying this a grievously hated is with Allah that you say what you do not do and this is is the person who ad, who counsels but does not act himself and does never addresses himself the, the messenger of Allah sallallahu said one who gives advice but has not admonished himself who pulls others other people back from ruinish ruinishing but he himself is not pulled back and who forbids wrong but he fails to heed his own admonition will be disappointed when he meets Allah because this is the essence of hypocrisy so we say the way out from this is that when you advise others you intend yourself and if you prohibit others from doing bad things you and you also intend with that you're prohibiting yourself but this so so the the command of commanding to good and prohibiting evil should never that never uh, leaves you even if you even if you are doing that sin and you're not doing the good that obligation of commanding to good and prohibiting evil 
that obligation does not leave you. Even if a person is doing the major sins, whether let's say he is he is drinking, he is afflicted with the with the sin of drinking, he, that does not the, the the obligation of prohibiting others from drinking does not uh, does not is not lifted from him. And only keep the company of intelligent, God-fearing people. Only sit in the presence of insightful, scholarly people. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, which of our companions are best? He said, one whose appearance reminds you of Allah, and whose speech increases you in knowledge, and whose actions remind you of the hereafter. Uh, humble yourself. So, so here, he, he, the conversation is about who you sit with, and who you spend time with. He said, do not sit with anyone except he's an intelligent, God-fearing person. So keeping the company, how is makhalata? How is keeping one's company? When it is said, keep the company of the ulama, the scholars, or keep the company of the elect, how can that company be kept or made? It's by you being close to them. Meaning, live close to them. Visit them and invite them to your house. This is keeping company. But if a person is is far away from the righteous, how can he be in their company? So for this reason, it is said that a person, if he wants to keep the company of the of the righteous and the ulama, then he should he should he should move to them or shift near them or live in in their neighborhood or live at least in the in the place in the country oh, but if they're in the east and you're in the west then then how how would you say how could you be in their company this is how the righteous were and predecessors were if they would travel and they and they wanted to move, they would move to countries uh, or places where they were righteous and they were salihin and they would leave the comforts of this world. A person can live in a in a, in a place where everything is beautiful, they're beautiful, there's beautiful scenery and there's comfort. Uh, but are there ulama? No, there are very few ulama, there's no gatherings of knowledge. That All that will not benefit you. Those beautiful scene, the beautiful sceneries, well, they would give you maybe some uh, some pleasure, some comfort, uh, and relaxation. But what about what comes after that? A believer does not look for luxury and comfort uh, uh, outward. There, there is comfort and lug. There is pleasure and knowledge. And r believe me, when I, when, when I, when I tell you about the situation that I went through when I was, when, when I was in, um, in secondary school, I saw Habib saying he saw this with his own eyes when he saw his teachers. May Allah have mercy on them. Our teacher, our Sheikh Habib Al uh, Aydarus, uh, uh, he passed away in Jeddah in, in a gathering of of knowledge in the in the majlis where the ihya was being uh, was being completed and it was on the same day uh, of the death anniversary of imam al-haddad and he loved these two he loved imam al-haddad imam ghazali and and he and and he he passed away while the munshid was singing the nasheed ya nafahatullah imam al-haddad so uh, habib used to attend his gathering after fajr uh, in the verse of Imam Nawawi and 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 on Wednesdays he would attend a gathering after Maghrib uh, of uh, of of uh, the fiqh Muqaddim uh, al of Imam al-Haddad in one of the days he was he was holding a book like how Habib's holding and there was and he stopped at one particular point and he was searching. Then he he got this um, uh, this um, he he did he 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 went into a state, and he was moving his head, and he was as if he was experiencing like Habib is showing. He was saying, "Knowledge is great. Knowledge is good. Knowledge is good." So this. Uh, uh, longing and this experience of of pleasure 
Habib couldn't comprehend their, there's books there's recitation of books but in that moment he was uh, uh, he was um, um, experiencing such joy that he was leaning back and forth and saying with his eyes closed um, knowledge is good knowledge is good knowledge is good and he was uh, showing this uh, or experiencing this 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 yearning and this longing and this experience of pleasure so we ask Allah that he makes us experience it the way he made them experience with ease and well-being so whoever wishes to keep the company of intelligent and God-fearing people then there's no point if you are in another country and he's in another country you come to where they are and live next to them this is how keeping company is and do not take and who's the intelligent person and the intelligent person has two meanings there is a in the intelligent person in the sight of the ulama is the one who does not disobey Allah meaning he does not intend to sin because the words of the disbelievers in the hellfire would be if we were to uh, think and we were to listen we wouldn't be here so there is no intellect for the disobedient person how could you disobey the al karim the most generous and the lord the one who shows you such excellence and 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 goodness and kindness this you disobey this you should be in prostration all of your life if a person served you and helped you and then and then he comes and tells you uh, 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 you go and tell him that I'm at your service now whatever you want me to do I'll do it for you but then what about Allah Azza wa Jal? then you should be like a sir uh, uh, like you should be in service of Allah Azza wa Jal. so the intelligent person is the one who is the one who does not sin who does not intend to sin the second type of intelligent people are, are or he's the one who who knows He knows how to distinguish uh, or differentiate between benefit and harm. He would say this would harm you, even if you would like like that particular thing. He, he this is an intelligent person. Also, from the signs of an intelligent person, as have you mentioned earlier, that he does not t make a decision. Uh, he doesn't make a quick decision meaning he doesn't make decisions based on just whatever he hears he uh, confirms he he researches and the intelligent person is also someone who reflects or, or contemplates or, or thinks deeply on a particular matter the intelligent person is the one who also thinks about the end outcomes of of uh, of things when you were to think about the outcome of a particular matter it does not mean that you are uh, um, it does not mean you are someone who is uh, not sure uh, someone who is mutaraddid um, uh, or someone who is uh, not sure or certain is someone who does it out of fear without a particular uh, so this is why they say they say the most of the sinners don't didn't think so if were they to were they to think they wouldn't sin this is why the devil tries tries uh, tries a lot to to numb the mind when the thoughts of sin come and there is this this numbness and and stupidification of the brain when when this when he whispers the thoughts of sins because were a person to think before he sins and he thinks clearly then he wouldn't go and perform that sin he would say am i a fool so for this reason you find that most people who don't 
the, the, the who are the people who don't think the most are the are the teenagers for instance they just want to go and do whatever is there they don't think about the outcomes they'll they'll tell their friends will say try this cigarette or try this this uh, or try this uh, drug and they'll say let's just try this we're not going to lose we're not going to lose out on anything they didn't think about the outcomes so thinking about the outcomes is this, is from the signs of inter intellect and it is not someone who's um and from the and from the signs of an intelligent person is that he does istikhara and from the signs of an intelligent person is that when you take advice from him he says let's think about it let let's see what this situation what this affair is about or at least he would be quiet and listen to you attentively before he gives you his 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 opinion but if a person you tell him what do you think if you go to the park tomorrow and immediately says oh yeah let's go this is just an example there's some people without thinking uh, one bit you should think what do you think if we go to the park tomorrow it's a good idea but what do we have tomorrow oh tomorrow's wednesday wednesday we have this and this we have already planned this we have we've scheduled other things for wednesday and do not keep the company of, of uh, people except that they're intelligent and god fearing so the muttaqi who is the muttaqi he is he's 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 similarly the one who thinks about the outcomes of of uh, things he's the muttaqi is the one he, who fears allah azza wa jal and only keep the company of intelligent god fearing people only sit in the presence of insightful scholarly people so we know keeping the company and mujalasa is different keeping the company uh, or mukhalata could be you 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 came across him in a in the gathering or in the marketplace but mujalasa mujalasa is to that you have chosen uh, someone to be your companion there are some people you keep the company of because it, it, it just so happened to be that you that you are in the same gathering or the same company but mujalasa is been from your own choice so the one you you choose to sit with is what you take on his qualities so if you sit but so if you want to sit or chew or do mujalasa from these intelligent and godfearing people then sit with the 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 insightful scholarly people so there are a lot of intelligent people but who are the most uh, who who should you be sitting from amongst these intelligent people that you listen to uh, are the insightful alim uh, with basira so that you benefit from their knowledge so the basir but the basir is the one who thinks on of the uh, inward uh, the meanings or the or the inward realities of things and not just the outward so this is why they say the fatwa if you want a fatwa on a, on a shari'i ruling then ask a scholar who 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 who's an alim who acts upon his knowledge as well meaning who the one who who has shari who's who's who applies sharia and tariqa who has who has in him sharia and tariqa because if you ask a scholar who acts upon his knowledge he will give you the religious ruling that is most beloved to allah and what is most befitting for you and someone would say is there a religious ruling that is not beloved to allah yes there is yes there is like for instance the things that are makru when we say something is makru makru means allah doesn't like it but it means you won't be in sin when you do it but it's some action that allah will dislike so i don't want to do something 
I'm, I don't want to do something that is haram and at the same time I don't want to do something that is disliked to Allah what's the point of me doing something that is not haram but it is disliked so so when you for this you ask a alim who acts upon his knowledge so when for instance if a person asks Habib Umar then he will give you an answer that is beloved to Allah and it is best for you and scholars like him the people who are well established in the in in in, in, in knowledge this is why Habib Habib asked his Shaykh may Allah preserve him what is the best time for Qiyamul Layl he said he said the time in which your your heart is most present it, it, these are beautiful words they're summarized and beneficial and not a lot of words going left right and what ulama said what so and so said in terms of fatwa there's um, he could have said do you want to pray the first of the night or the last of the night he said what is best for you when do you find your heart most present because what is required what is intended is not to stand the night what is intended is your heart being present your heart being united with Allah so if your heart becomes one with Allah in the beginning of the night then that's good if it's in the last part of the night then let it be then if it's in the middle of the night then let it be then see where your heart is this is what is intended only keep the company of and only sit in the presence of insightful scholarly people because if you were to sit with the scholars you would benefit from their knowledge not just this you would also you would be you would be counted from those who took from his knowledge that so and so attended so and so's gatherings and they say that if you sit in the gathering of a alim with sincerity you actually even enter into his intercession is shafa'a what does it mean is shafa'a intercession shafa'a intercession is requesting the shafi the interse intercessor Is, is is to intercede for someone because okay we'll just give another example you have a wasta you have a a, uh, a connection you know a person who's looking for a job and you have a manager in your company who's your friend when you go to this manager for for this person who who you're looking for a job and he, he asks and then when the manager asks you when you, the manager asks you how do you know this person you would say he's my neighbor or he's my nephew or he's my uh, my friend so what are you t mentioning you're mentioning your connection to that person so once you mention that once you mention that connection you basically intercede for that person similarly the ulama so when they're asked the ulama they would say um, so and so was in my gathering or so and so served me or so and so helped me or so and so attend my gathering this is why it was said about even Sayyidina Abdul Qadil Jailani that he that he said that he, so and so saw the dust of my students so you, that you enter into that connection if you're, this is why they say if you're not an alim if you're not a scholar then be a student and if not then be someone who loves knowledge and the Prophet was asked and we said alim scholar sorry uh, sorry a, scho a scholar who's basir is someone who thinks about the uh, the outcomes of things and he who thinks about uh, about things that are good for you and not, that or or not good for you for instance not every book it should be read there's some books that are good for you and there's some books that are not good for you to the point that that scholar would choose for you a book that uh, that is appropriate for you 
it might occur to me that I want to read such and such a book. Then the Shaykh will tell you, no, read this book instead. Then you submit, you accept. He chose it for you. And the Prophet was asked, which of our companions are best? Meaning, who, who, who amongst our companions are most deserving our companionship? He said, one whose appearance, whose appearance reminds you of Allah. Meaning, you don't even need to speak to him or him giving advice. Just you merely looking at him would make you remember, La ilaha illallah, this is the best amongst them. And whose speech increases you in knowledge. See the words, increase you in knowledge. Meaning, you have knowledge already, but just him merely speaking will increase you in knowledge. There are some people uh, who, who say, I attend a gathering, uh, 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 a gathering of knowledge of such and such sheikh. And they say, what is this, what is this uh, gathering about? They say, it's the book, uh, we do the book, Beginning of Guidance. And then you say, oh, but I've done this book 20 times. But then they say, this alim, when he, when he, when this, person reads from Ibadayatul Hidayah, I increase in knowledge. An ignorant would say, but if I simply read uh, the conditions of uh, wudu are six, what do I increase? No, he's going to give you another knowledge. Uh, ilm and inward knowledge. In knowledge is outward and inward. He would teach you the, 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 the illnesses inside of you. And whose actions remind you of the year after. And look at these last words, they're amazing. He would remind you, his actions would remind you of the hereafter. How can that be? What what is it what does it mean by actions here? Any action that he does, whether it is a form of worship or an our habit, meaning if you see him pray, you know that this prayer is 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 a prayer of someone who's doing it for the hereafter because the people who, who who pray just for um just for fulfilling an obligation but there are some who who pray for the here for their for their hereafter for their meeting them their lord this is why the prophet said pray the prayer of the one who is departing this world so look if you hear him reciting the quran you know that he is reciting the quran for his year after and not just for uh, the fact I read or, or taking a box that I read so, or for or he's reading the Quran for meeting his Lord and even in his daily dealings if you see him uh, buying and selling or in matters of this world you know that he's doing it for the year after meaning if you were to see him in the marketplace or in the garden or the or the park or the airport you would know that he is doing it for the hereafter and he's got an intention a righteous intention he doesn't just do things like that and whose actions remind you of the hereafter yeah. and Habib will tell us the secret from the secrets why are there some people that when you see them even in a, in a common place something would stir in you uh, some goodness would stir in your heart and it could be something simple maybe they would say come eat with us and it would uh, stir in you a great meaning why because that person who told you such and such a thing he's not doing anything except that he has a righteous intention so so the righteous intention affects the people affects you and the people you sit with so every word that comes out of you has a garment of your heart around it so a person could speak to you about common things worldly things but his intent intention 
or it, but it is covered with the witness him him witnessing Allah or him experiencing Allah observing him it's it's not like any other words for for instance there are some people between uh, him and his spouse he's upset with his wife god forbid and then and then and then he says i speak to her and i try to please her but she doesn't listen to me why why doesn't she benefit because why because what's your what's your intention so that she doesn't get upset with you or is it for the sake of allah or just to make her happy or because if you make her upset she won't cook food for you or you'll end up eating takeaway and then he makes her happy just to so that she could cook food for him and clean his clothes this is not a good intention and that and the words that come out of your mouth will not affect and it, it won't even cross her ears so this is why it said whose actions remind you of the hereafter and his words as well and you can measure or take or, or keep this in mind and, and measure everything else if something becomes difficult for you and you don't know the reason for it then know that it's because you did not intend in it uh, you did not intend something good to do it when doing it this is this is the bottom line he 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 expended all of the means he did all the means and the door is still closed and he doesn't know what's the cause the reason is because you do not intend a righteous intention and righteous intention is connected to allah and the hereafter or in benefiting people so for this reason the people of the path say that whoever opens in himself a righteous intention Allah will open for him 70 doors of uh, of of guidance and whoever uh, holds on or opens in himself or intends in himself a righteous thing so many doors of 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 success would open up for him and he would say subhanallah all these doors open up and you would find him to be a simple person he's like a simple person we 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 pray together and why is it that all of his affairs are 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 so easy the the affairs of the heart what is his intention what is his intention and what is your intention that's the difference whoever opens for himself a righteous intention allah opens for him 70 doors of tawfiq of enabling grace this is why we said in the previous lesson what are the doors of of enabling grace they said righteous intention humble yourself before the truth and make yourself subservient unto it constantly remember allah and you will obtain nearness to him the prophet sallallahu said those who will be sitting in the company of allah on the day of judgment are the subservient humble fearful people who remember allah much may, may allah make us from them we ease and well-being he says humble yourself before the truth and make yourself subservient unto it what is to the truth it is Allah's com Allah's uh, com command, uh, or what ha Allah has ordained for you, what Allah has intended for you. That is the reality. So don't um, turn your back, or don't reject, and do not uh, debate. Humble yourself before the truth, even if the truth is against you, or even if the truth is. Uh, is 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 uh, someone else is presenting the truth let's say there is a debate there's a there's a argument between you and another person and then allah manifested the truth uh, in the other person's words here the lower self feels defeat they say the sign of a, of a not having humility is that
uh, is that is that when uh, the person even tells you the truth you like you reject it you're stubborn you're like maybe you didn't hear properly maybe you didn't get the right information he tries he tries to belittle that opinion or that person humble yourself before the truth meaning accept it and make yourself subservient unto it the ulama say that you believe in the one who is saying it by saying you what you said is is right and what my understanding was wrong what you said is true and right thank you so much for telling me that this is what humility is but someone who says it's okay um, all right all right we got it we got it let's change the topic this is not humility humility and being subservient is that you admit your mistake and you ex accept uh, the the correctness of the other person and subservient and being subservient to the truth is to do what the other person is, has said so as long as this is the truth I'll act upon it even if it's against my own self when when it does this happen uh, when 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 between two people a person thinks that he is, is or you think that you are more stronger or better or more knowledgeable and this usually happens between husband and wife the 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 husband always usually thinks that he's in the truth and the wife doesn't understand or doesn't know but maybe that Allah uh, showed or exposed uh, or, or, or manifested to the wife the truth and her opinion was correct maybe a, a an argument or dispute happened between the husband and wife and there was a misunderstanding and a difference of opinion every each one of the each one says I'm right and then it was and then and then it was uh, and then it was uh, then it was made clear that her opinion was correct then what should you do you should go to her and say what you said is is correct and and I was wrong and and we should do what you 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 said this is what it, this is humility is humbling yourself admitting your mistake and accepting other one's correctness and khudu is to to act upon what the other person said constantly remember Allah and you will obtain nearness to him we said that Adim Mudawama do constantly and Mudawama means then all of your times and all of your states so there is no uh, stillness or or, st or or stopping of zikr so if your tongue stops then your eyes shouldn't stop because your eyes do zikr and if your eyes stop then the heart should do zikr what's the proof that the eyes do zikr Allah says in the Quran about the people whose eyes have a veil from our zikr from our remembrance constantly remember Allah with your tongue and your heart and your intellect and your eyes and your ears and your steps all this is zikr in fact we even said that from the meanings of constantly doing zikr is to to have a name from the names of Allah present in your heart and your mind that means you are constantly in zikr with Allah even if you don't outwardly articulate the merely you merely experiencing or witnessing that Allah is uh, listening to you this meaning or this feeling or this experience staying in you is 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 constant zikr and this is the zikr of the heart The Prophet ﷺ said, "Those who will be sitting in the company of Allah on the day of judgment, who are those? In the, who are they? They are the, they are the subservient. The Khad there is the one who, who submits himself to the orders, the commands. Not just admit and accept it, but you, 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 you act upon it." He is the one who is subservient, who's called there. Like for instance, when you pray, you pray the prayer of a khadi, someone who's humble himself, 
uh, before Allah, belittled himself, lowered himself before Allah, not someone who's bigging himself up before Allah. The, the humble ones. Those who have broken hearts. They are humble with people. They're humble with before their parents. When they when their dealings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and lower a wing of of humility. The word dhul is something how you describe a slave, a word that you used to describe a slave, a slave that is a humble slave. The Prophet Allah didn't say just serve your parents. He said he said lower for them a wing of humility lower yourself before your parents until it is said that you are a slave of your father or you're a slave of your mother this is how you humble yourself before your parents to the point that if somebody uh, if a person were to see you uh, and your father he would say he would ask you are you his slave and a person who wouldn't know you would say is this is this your boss or something no yes this is my master you would say this is why the righteous predecessors would say that if they were to sp speak about their f their father they would say this is my sayyid my 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 sayyidi my father not they wouldn't say this is my old man and and this and all this is the old man with white hair and where did he get his white hairs from in the first place by raising you by by being worried about you and and he's he's, he's bent his back just trying all and and to serve you and having uh, and to feed you all of his life and you're calling him an old man and some people are even ashamed of calling their fathers their father as if he thinks that he that that uh, that uh, his father he's above his father he he turned out to be a doctor or an engineer uh, some people think that if if i'm if you're a doctor then your that your father is going to be a doctor as well that if you're a professor that your father is going to be a professor as well it doesn't have to be like that in fact most people most of the of the predecessors uh, the famous ones in the past i'm not talking about the famous ones in this day and age the social media ones i'm talking about the, the famous ulama their parents were simple people who were the parents of Imam Ghazali? They used to uh, clean, uh, or they used to make uh, silk, or wool. They used to make wool. The mother of Imam Al, of Sayyidina Imam Abdul Qadir Jailani, she was a simple woman. Even when when Allah mentions, uh, talk Allah uh, mentions. When Allah mentions about Sayyidina Maryam and Sayyidina Isa, what does He mention about them? He said they used to eat. Obviously, they eat. It has many meanings that they used to eat. This is indicating their 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 their, their slavehood to Allah, their humility before Allah. One of its meanings is that Sayyidina Isa would not eat except with his mother. He wouldn't eat except with his mother. He wouldn't eat before her. He wouldn't say, you eat, I'll eat later. Look for the opportunity where you could eat with your mother because these moments, these moments are priceless. The humble ones, they're, they're humble for the sake of Allah. They're humble before creation for the sake of Allah. They don't even show arrogance before a an ant. They, they don't show arrogance even before an ant. Fearful people who... So they're subservient, they're humble, they're fearful as well. Who do they fear? They're fe fearful of Allah. 
they're fear, afraid of the punishment they're, they're afraid of of a bad ending they're afraid of a bad judgment they're afraid of hurting someone they're afraid of upsetting someone they're afraid of hurting someone's thought feelings this is the one who's successful but if someone who doesn't care whether he's upset or not upset i don't care if he's upset or not upset this will he be in the company of allah no why would you be in the company of allah on the day of judgment if you don't care about the people if you don't care whether the people you sit with are upset with you or you've hurt them or they might be disturbed by you and you never apologized from them if a person seeks apology and says, you know, sorry, I might have upset, upset you, this is someone who's concerned about his relationships with others. And he's, so he, they're fearful people. So for this reason, those who are fearful, they're afraid of, as we said, they're afraid of anyone being upset from them. So every every word that comes out from them has has no meaning uh, that could be derived from it that would upset someone so everything is measured habib saying he he uh, there, there there's no gathering that he sat in and and habib is saying that he admits that he, of his shortcomings that he and he admits that he no matter he even though he admits of his faults but he never heard any words from his teachers that 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 upsetted him or there was some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, disgrace for him even though he out of his humility is saying even though i deserve to be said those words and we would end this lesson that that habib habib uh, abdul qadir bin ahmed sagaf are the sheikh of our sheikhs and our greatest father habib abdul qadir may allah have mercy on him as you know and or you may have heard that in his gatherings uh, everyone would attend the ulama the righteous the students of knowledge the traders the simple people the children even the children and from amongst them there were sinners and there were people of shortcomings and everyone is a sinner one day a person came and this person was known amongst the people like who's got a lot of issues he does a lot of bad things basically but and he came to the gathering of Habib al Qadir Sagaf so there's nothing wrong in this the problem I'm not saying there's a problem what, what, what people saw that was wrong is that this person came in with his all of his he was despite him people knowing him as someone with a lot of issues he was also a traitor so when he came into Habib Qadir's gathering Habib Abdul Qadir said welcome to the righteous person welcome oh righteous person so the people started they were they started thinking that they were looking here and there who's this righteous person we know this person so some people were thinking maybe Habib Abdul Qadir and some people even started having a bad opinion uh, of Habib Abdul Qadir Sagaf, is he saying this because he's a he's a businessman with a lot of money? So he said. So, and it wasn't much time after, except that that this person, whenever he would attend the gatherings of Habib Abdul Qadir Sagaf, he would be crying until righteousness overcame him, and he became and all of his wealth was spent for the sake of Allah to the point he would see he would see amazing dreams so Habib Abdul Qadir's words when he said Salih righteous was from his Basira and that stirred his heart because when this man heard those words he would have said despite he would have said he would have said to himself I'm I, I, I am I'm not a righteous person and and Habib al Qadr would not say something just as an out of exaggeration so these words that came out of him are not um, just uh, petty words or, or just just meaningless words so that these thoughts made him turn back to Allah and repent to Allah then the hadith says fearful people 
So for this reason, when you speak before your parents, then then adorn your words and, and say them in good way and never ever say words that would upset them. And if you can't do that, then just be quiet. And those who remember Allah a lot. So we ask Allah that He makes us from them. So these people, the, the, the subservient ones, the humble, the faithful people, they deserve Allah's company on the Day of Judgment. We ask Allah that He makes us from them with ease and well-being. And we suffice with this. And we ask Allah that He pardons us and He overlooks our faults. And He prepares us to be from those who are in His company in this world, in the Barzakh and the year after, and the people in the company of the Prophet Al-Fatiha. How can we move how can we how can we pray a prayer like how the Prophet said delight our eyes with it O Bilal how can we pray a prayer of those who are yearning for Allah Azza wa Jal not a prayer of someone who is burdening himself this requires uh, struggling against yourself it requires patience because this prayer is not once a year it's it's five times a day meaning you need to to prepare yourself and and strive daily until you die because the prayer is never lifted from you uh, except you uh, if you lose your mind if a person loses his mind, then prayer is lifted from him. But as long as a person has his mind, his intellect, then prayer is never, the obligation of prayer is never lifted from him, even if he's on bed and he can't move. So how can we reach this state where we are like the Prophet said to Bilal, oh, delight our eyes with, it, with the call to prayer? First, we should make dua to Allah that He makes us reach this, this station. And secondly, we should learn the rulings of prayer, the conditions, the, the, the obligations, the, the, the sunnans, and the etiquettes. Thirdly, read the, the, the stories of the righteous predecessors, the righteous people, how they were in their prayer. How did they pray? How did they do wudu? How were they in the, when they did their ruku? When, they, when we read their states, that without doubt is going to stir something it would stir something in us how is it that that when they would pray and, and and a bird would come and sit on their heads so reading their stories affects the heart what follows this is 
that we prepare for prayer before the time enters because the one who prepares for prayer before its time is that firstly he's in wudu he knows the place where he will pray in and he would do congregational prayer mean meaning this is someone who exalts this ruling and he loves this ruling and Allah will grant him that so also to reach the state we try we try to do a lot of voluntary prayer because doing a lot of voluntary prayer will lead to attaining uh, contentment and pleasure in prayer and the point that follows is very important and listen to this try every one of us should try that we that if anything happens uh, that upsets him he goes and makes wudu and prays if he feels fear he goes makes wudu and prays as if he's saying my safety is in prayer if he feels hunger and he doesn't have food he prays if he feels thirst and he doesn't have water he makes wudu and prays if he if he feels a sadness he's just sad instead of just sitting there and crying and remember and long for some things if you're crying if you cry when you're sad it's not going to increase it's not going to benefit you what, what do you think about crying in prayer isn't that better you, you will cry no matter what you're sad so this sadness and you crying just sitting sit sit like that and some people they listen to sad music to cry even more let that let those tears fall in your prayer and you would feel contentment you feel at ease and if you are even happy then go and pray make prayer be your uh, go-to place for a, for your uh, for your moments of happiness and sadness and hunger and thirst even if you're feeling lonely and 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 you're feeling uh, 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 so lonely that nobody talks to you nobody messages you go and pray and inshallah Habib says that if you do this uh, Habib guarantees you guarantees that that prayer will be for, will be a, a source of comfort and pleasure for you is there a dua that we can pray to increase us in 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 in, in experiencing the pleasure of iman the most beautiful of prayers that helps in experiencing sweetness of 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 faith is a dua of fajr of the prophet is a dua of fajr it is mentioned in the khulasa it is a dua that is said after the sunnah of fajr oh allah i ask you for faith that is always alive in my heart is it's always it is 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 always alive it's is it, whenever i glorify immediately i get the effect everything uh, that i do uh, from uh, from my faith because of my faith i will taste its sweetness even if i'm dealing with people because of my faith and this dua of fajr for habib Hussain has a story behind it and this is uh, when Habib was uh, when when he was close to puberty, age puberty. He didn't read the du'a back then. So once he visited uh, a scholar from Tareem, and this scholar was in was in Hijaz, and Habib was a student back then. And we were sitting with him until sunrise, and it was like a beautiful gathering of knowledge and in Shad, and until Fajr time came, and then, and then, and the Fajr Azan, he, he they were up all night with him basically until until Fajr time came in, not sunrise, Fajr time, 
and then and then they did the sunnahs of fajr and then habib said the habib said uh, the sheikh said to habib Hussain, who will read the dua of fajr and habib Hussain was like is there a dua of fajr and then and and the sheikh reproached habib like don't you know the dua of fajr But he was the now have has memorized it, but he said that but he was the cause because he said he said you haven't memorized it even though it's a long dua. It's a long dua. And then Habib thought it was gonna be two, three lines, but when I Habib saw when 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 Habib saw the dua it was long. And and then Habib thought he, he reproached me for uh, such a long dua. But may Allah reward that Shaykh for for reproaching him. Uh, and, and and these are beneficial gatherings and and unfortunately some people when they are reproached they get upset and they're like oh he 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 doesn't regard me and he leaves the gatherings and habib saying may allah reward that sheikh and he's never forgotten this uh, that until this moment he remembers it as if he's witnessing at this very moment may allah reward him immensely he said you don't you haven't memorized the fajr dua how can you not memorize the dua fajr this is something great there's something big what about this this generation what do they memorize if you say this to someone today you haven't memorized uh, the Fajr Dua they'll say you're extremist so for this reason Habib says for us to us who asked about this Dua the Dua that would help us to taste the sweetness of faith Habib said, I counsel you to read the Dua of Fajr that is in the the Khulasa, in the part section where it says Dua after Fajr. Read it every day until you memorize it. It's very easy to uh, to memorize. And you with, with repetition you memorize. And everyone memorizes it through repetition. I have friends that I'm not able to leave them but me sitting with them has wasted a lot of my time and sitting with them also hurts my heart um, I, I be, I be thanking him for a, a direct and honest question you have friends that you love and you have uh, and you have this uh, you have friendship uh, since childhood uh, and there are some people who have friends from kindergarten but sometimes they have some bad qualities such friends so if the person himself can see that there's a lot of waste of time and and when you think and when you see that that there's a harm for your heart then you are in a lot of danger and you can't leave them I'll give you a solution for instance I don't know what happens in these gatherings but we could say uh, uh, you know young men meeting and and If there's something that is prohibited happening in that gathering, then you should you should you should leave and you should say, um, uh, "I love you all." You know, we 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 we've grown up together, but then there's some things that we need to leave. So, so I don't want to deprive myself of you your, your company. So you, you speak to them in a in a beautiful manner. You don't make them feel that you would lose out on me, but say I will lose out on you. You, you, you say in an indirect way, I don't want to lose your company, and you guys are so close to me, and so uh, and you speak in this manner. 
if there is no sin in the gathering and it's just wasting time then then you spend time with them uh, only on certain times not whenever they meet it doesn't if let's say they meet on on Thursdays then if they meet every Thursday then uh, uh, then just uh, sit if they meet every Thursday that doesn't mean you have to meet them every Thursday you can go once a month or, or twice thirdly if you if you if you're if you're meeting then from the things you talk about is that you if if you've read a a, a story that has affected you then you tell them about that story or that event so that so that even 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 though the entire gathering might be just wasting time but this story might change the the the, the, the uh, put some benefit into that gathering and thirdly you can invite them to your house or you come up with an idea you say we have a gathering in a in a park or we make a tent and you prepare the gathering and you you schedule the whole thing you bring a friend of yours who who you like for them to meet uh, and then you uh, tell them that there's a friend I want you all to meet and this meeting and also these gatherings you 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 don't say like oh what do you think we meet at nine o'clock no you say let's meet at seven and pray Aisha together so that there be a connection between you all even if it's through prayer and with this through this prayer the effect will take place if you're let's say the Imam praying with them and you pray verses that that have an effect not kulu Allah had true these verses have effect but everyone knows these but 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 verses that have uh, that can stir meanings so these are just some points that inshallah would benefit and it's, and of course don't forget to make dua for them if none of this benefits and there's harm to your heart then know that your heart uh, you, you you can't um, there's no a replacement for your heart so you slowly slowly distance yourself and if they really love you then they'll ask the reason for that and they can bring about another conversation We sit with people whose concerns are only the dunya. Who who are these people? Are they your are they your relatives? Are they your is they your spouse? It's different, different from different relatives. So if the, if this is if there's a relatives, then you can't leave them. Uh, so you should do it with righteous intention, uh, and 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 then you can follow the same points mentioned earlier. Question asking, what does it mean by Ila Hadrat al Nabi when we, in, we we intend to read the Fatiha to the Prophet? Is it we uh, intending to make the reward reach him? Firstly, whatever we read, the reward goes to the Prophet, whether we intend to or not, because he's the one who taught us. So, why do we say 
Al Fatiha to the Hadra of the Prophet. They say, the ulama say, the, our teachers have made us, or people of the path, they, they seek intercession, they intercede, and they intercede, they intercede uh, through righteous deeds. And Fatiha is a righteous action. So when you read the Fatiha, and Fatiha is for what is read to. So they would make dua to Allah, they would make dua to Allah, then they would say, from the, for the, with the secret of the secrets of Fatiha to the Hadra of the Prophet, meaning he is the one who taught us Fatiha, so we gift him this Fatiha in exaltation and veneration for the Prophet. What is the proof? And that to him ascend the good words and righteous deeds, he ascends. So the, so they say what is good words are dua. So dua is good words without doubt. And righteous deeds is what ascends it. That is the recitation of Quran. And in recitation of Quran is the best of actions. The Prophet some said, the best actions of my Ummah are the recitation of Quran. So they would make dua and they would raise that dua with a righteous deed so that it becomes more uh, more likely for it to be accepted and erased. And the thing that would make it more, more acceptable is if it's gifted to the Prophet Sallallahu They say the, the spiritual wayfarer, the least they should do, they should, they should remember Allah a hundred times. La ilaha illa a hundred times istighfar, a hundred times uh, salawat and the Prophet Otherwise, they're not referred to as someone who's seeking the hereafter. As for the name of Allah, Azawajal, Allah, so Habib gives us ijaza the way Habib Amari gave him ijaza. That, that if a thought comes to you and you're not capable of expelling that thought then you take a deep breath and you look into the heavens and you say Allah as long as your breath is there with you and you intend with that uh, uh, expelling the thought from your heart so you do what Habib is doing until your your breath finishes and you intend in doing that expelling all the thoughts and their effects but with truthfulness say we accept the jaza jaza what is intended by experiencing sweetness of faith is it meanings or what is what is experiencing the meaning experiencing the meaning and this is clear some people experience uh, 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 spiritual strength in doing righteous people this is from from the meanings of it and maybe you are you are you intend by your question um, how can there be this uh, this experience of sweetness 
uh, to bring the meaning close, to experience happiness that you've been enabled to do uh, to obey Allah. So he tastes the sweetness of being given that enabling grace. And what is even better than that is the sweetness of experiencing a victory over the lower self. You taste, experience the sweetness of your faith, the, the thing that you experience the sweetness of faith the most, or in other words, who is the one who experiences the sweetness of faith the most, is the one who taste, who tasted the, the bitterness of disbelief. Not the sweetness of disbelief, the bitterness of, of disbelief. And uh, if how do you know the extent how do you know the 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 extent of of uh, of we ask on that to grant us the enabling grace to do what pleases him uh, how do you know the extent of the sweetness of something by tasting the opposite so that you should do at least a hundred times zikr minimum Grant us and enabling grace to do that which should please him. O one who. Bismillah, Fatihah, Al Hadrat, Nabi Allah, Bismillah.